Hello, and welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show 2022 edition. We are so glad that you're here and joining us. My name is Nicole Moses, and I am joined by my friend and coworker, Maddie Vincent. Hey, Maddie. Hello, Nicole, and hi to you, friend, who is tuning in today. We are so happy to be with you this morning. Thursdays are part of my favorite part of the week. So we are so glad to be here. Yes, Maddie, I have a question for you. What is one goal you have for 2022? But before you answer, I want you who is watching to let us know a goal that you have for 2022 as well. We would love to see what you guys are aiming for this year. Okay, I don't know if you relate to this at all. But goals overwhelm me and I am not a very good goal setter. I'm not a very good goal keeper. Um, And so this year I set off to make a really simple New Year's resolution, which is to show up and be faithful. Um, But I'm excited for this episode of the Proverbs 31 Morning Show because I know that it's going to help me create goals that will accomplish what I want to accomplish this year. That is great, Maddie. Well, let us know in the comments what goals you guys have. I don't have any big goals. Maybe I will change my mind after today's morning show, but a couple goals I have. I really want to read a book, at least one book a month this year. I would love to do that. I also really want to get better at making my bed every day. I am so terrible at that. So that is just a couple goals that I have. How, how is the bed making going, Nicole? I did it yesterday, but I got to tell you, I didn't do it this morning. <laughs> I was getting ready in a rush. So I also did not make my bed this morning. <laughs> so if you made your bed this morning, let us know. You're doing great. Um, we love seeing these goals for 2022 come in through the comments. Um, and you know what, you guys, it's sometimes it's hard to even just start and make a goal, you know? Yeah, that's so true. And that is why we're so excited today for today's morning show. Our special guest will be joining us, Lisa Allen. She's the executive director of ministry and staff development. Whoa. Here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. Okay. And not only does Lisa serve us so well here at Proverbs 31, but she's also a certified personal and ministry coach. You guys, Lisa has so much wisdom and experience. We're so excited to have her here today because we know that she's going to just share lots of good things. Um, Don't forget, if you are a note taker and you feel overwhelmed, maybe we're going too fast, we have a Facebook group for the morning show community. Um, You can join there and we'll give a recap of the episode, any verses and scripture she shares questions she asked lots of things like that so go check that out and before lisa allen comes on we wanted to show a quick video to tell you more about her callings she serves as executive director of ministry and staff development at proverbs 31 ministries where she leads and develops the first five online bible studies she speaks speaker donor and social media teams her experience as a board certified life coach consultant and speaker has uniquely prepared her as a popular keynote speaker conference speaker and workshop facilitator Her engaging messages leave her audience with a renewed passion, calling, and confidence. Anyone who spends any time with Lisa can attest that she enjoys the certifications she's received for Enneagram training, team coaching, DISC personality profile, and Gallup Strengths Finder. Lisa and her husband live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they have two grown children and a darling Yorkie named PJ. We're so excited to hear from Lisa Allen. Lisa, we are so happy to have you on the show today. Welcome. Hi, Nicole. I am so, you know, this is one of my favorite subjects in the whole world. Lisa, we are so glad you're here. We have a lot of questions for you today. So we are so excited. 
the first thing that I am thinking about as a coach and expert in the field, I would just love to pick your brain. How can we look at goals best from a Christian perspective? You know, Nicole, I get that question so often. What, uh, how do you know if a goal is godly? Mm. And I want to make it really simple for you guys, because I sometimes think we overthink it. Um, a goal is godly simply because God has asked it from you or of you. And so often I'm so guilty, especially late December, early January, we've just walked through and you're scrolling, right? Social media. And everybody's like one person's doing a plan or another person's doing, you know, keto, somebody else is going to the gym and you think those are all good goals. You know, I want to memorize scripture but take those goals. God might not be asking you. And so I like to take my goals and say, God, I think this would benefit my life in the year ahead. What do you think? And so that's what makes a goal godly. But I also have um, four scriptures and there's many more that I think support the concept of living with goals in mind. And so um, the first one is a second Chronicles 15, seven, and it says, um, do not be discouraged for your work will be rewarded. Goals have a reward. You put something in and you get something out at the other end of it. God rewards the things that he's called you to. If he's called you to it, he'll get you through it. Um, the second is a very um, common passage, Philippians at 314. It says, forgetting what is behind and uh, pressing on toward the prize. See the apostle Paul, he was forward thinking and goals help us look ahead, right? And see what's coming. The next is Luke 14, 28. Luke 14, 28 is the passage about if you're going to build a tower, aren't you going to sit down first and calculate the cost? And this is really important because when we look at the goals that we're, con we're considering, there is a cost to doing them energy, time, effort. There's also a cost to not doing them. You know, what's at stake if you ignore your health? What's at stake if you don't save for your college education for your kids, those kind of things. And then the last one is first Corinthians 9, 26. And it says, that's the way I run with a clear goal in mind. Goals help us to be intentional because you know what the world will aim us. The, the world will tell us what to do. And when we have godly goals that he is blessed and guided, then we feel like God's pushing us forward in the goals that we've set. Lisa, that's so helpful. And thank you for setting up this conversation with such a good, deep mm -hmm. biblical framework. I think that's kind of counterculture to how um, goals are normally talked about. So I'm really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. um, my next question for you is sometimes big goals can be intimidating, especially if we go back to godly goals and doing something that God has called us to do. Sometimes that feels intimidating and almost impossible because they might be really big and lofty. So what advice do you suggest on how we might begin to tackle those big goals without feeling discouraged that it's taking so long? It's a great question. Well, first of all, not every goal has to be big and lofty. Making your bed. You know what? I literally am working with somebody that their goal, one of their goals this year is flossing their teeth. You know, that's going to that's gonna get you healthy, but that's like a minute a day, less than a minute a day. Uh, but here's what I would say. Because we started with God, because we're saying, God, I think you're calling me to do these things. Are you blessing this? Then this is kind of funny, but uh, what would happen if we had like a bold confidence, maybe even an audacious confidence? And you know where I looked for my inspiration for this? I looked up some goals that actual kids have. And I want to share some kids goals. They're silly, they're fun, but they are bold and audacious. Um, so the first kid, he wants to succeed in herpetology. Somebody put in the chat, chat if you even know what that is. I don't even know what that is, but go, go get that. You know, um, he wants to have a wife and kids. That's a very realistic common goal. Um, and he also wants to breed dragons. <laughs> you know, but he is saying that with the same confidence as having a wife and kids. Uh, my second goal that this the kid inspired me with his bold um, confidence and realism. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? What's your goal? He said, hey, I'm seven. I want to be eight. <laughs> Completely realistic. I love that. And then the last one, um, she wants it to rain tacos. I want to bring tacos too, yes, right? Yes. Uh, okay, you see where I'm going with this. This is that silly. Those are silly ways to look at it. But what if because God called us to it? What if we had that bold confidence that He's not going to call us to it and not give us what we need in order to accomplish it? So that's yeah. part one. Now the next thing when we think about goals is really any goal that you set. Um, there's two questions to ask yourself. 
Simple questions. Number one is where are you now? Where are you now? And number two, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? And so typically there's six or seven areas of our life that we ask these questions about goals. Um, the first might be our spiritual life. You know, we want to start memorizing scripture or have a more consistent quiet time. Um, the second one is relationships. You know what? Um, it could be a date night for your marriage. It could be starting to date if you're single. Um, I had one for my friendship in 2021 with one of my best friends. Our goal was to meet every other week. And for the whole year. And you know what? Not only did we pretty much do it, we're meeting tomorrow. You know, it's carried right into 2022. Um, another area is finances, saving, saving for college, saving for retirement, um, not spending, not shopping. Um, the fourth is physical health, emotional health, and mental health. This is where eating, exercise, and self-care comes in. Uh, next is career. What, you know, some people want to go back to college. Some people need a certification. Um, hobbies. The next one is hobbies and lifestyle. People, you know, you can have a goal to take a trip. Um, you can have a goal to learn how to golf. Um, and that and lifestyle. So any one of those things. Now we're going to talk about this in a minute. Don't choose something for all of them because that'll discourage you. Um, but any one of those things, ask yourself this question, where am I now in my spiritual life and where do I want to go or in my finances? Hope that helps. Yeah, Lisa, that's really helpful. I think that is a better way to think through goals that you do have um, rather than, like you said earlier, just sort of on your scroll, seeing well, my friend is doing the keto diet or exercising every day. And you sort of just pick that up because maybe you feel like you have to have a goal or you have to be doing the same thing everybody else is. So I think that's a great way to look more internally and more personally to you. I love that. Well, another question I have is how important is it to set goals? Like mm -hmm. what, how have you seen that impact your life? those that you have helped is goal setting goal something that we really have to do mm. uh, you don't have to in fact as a coach i would always say get rid of the have to's because if it feels like a have to you're going to resent it so again i like to take it back to god because then it's a matter of obedience and trust and faith you know but goals are good um they're guardrails that help us aim our life a little bit so you just heard about one of the goals that i set which is just to be in relationship community accountability with my best friend um i have a friend that years ago um i was coaching and her goal was to simply have a regular time with god and so through our coaching she um described where she would meet him and she was going to meet him in this zebra striped chair and to this day she has long since met that goal meets with god every single single day. The zebra, the zebra striped chair is in a different part of her house. They're in a different house. But to this day, I remember she met that goal. I've had people and toxic relationships, again, under the blessing of God or change career paths. Um, so, you know, goals are really helpful. But here's another part is if you're thinking about a goal, here's three different kinds of goals that will help you categorizing what you're trying to accomplish. So all goals are really one of three things. Um, the first thing is behavioral goals, because that means I want to change my behavior, change how I act. So this is where um, healthy eating comes in. Maybe I want to chop more veggies every day, or I want to drive. Uh, the reason I chose to do Pilates, it's on the way home from work. I'd never done it a day in my life. I just thought it, it, there's a better chance if, I, if it's on my way home that I'll actually do it. That's a behavioral goal. Stop hitting the snooze. Anybody else tired of spilling their coffee on the way to work and running in on two wheels late? You know what I mean? Like two wheeling it into the parking lot. <laughs> That's a, that's a behavioral goal. Um, so the second is a competency goal. This is going to be um, a goal to improve a skill. Maybe you want to learn how to cook, or maybe you want to um, become a better speaker or um, get a certification in something, uh, a, a gym instructor or something. And the third is an outcome goal. Now, an outcome goal meets a target. And so these are things like, hey, I want to invite two women to join my Bible study this year. I want to invite two women or I want to add 10 percent to my annual income somehow this year or save 10 percent or don't spend 10 percent like I did last year. Or maybe I just want to lose five pounds. Mm. So that's that's okay. Yeah, those are so different. helpful, Lisa. I think I had a couple light bulb moments as you were talking about these. As the self-proclaimed girl who doesn't like goals, as you're talking, I'm realizing that I have more goals than I even realize. One of them being 
tell me if this is an outcome goal or not, but I'm in a long distance relationship. My boyfriend lives in California and we try to see each other once a month. I would never have described that as a goal, but it is a goal. We try to see each other once a month and the outcome is that we get to be together um, and we meet that goal every month. And so as I'm like thinking about this, I wonder how many little goals that we have (laughs) that we would never describe as goals because they don't seem like they take shape in a way a traditional goal does. Maddie, thank you for sharing that because I feel like that's the thing. When I work with people that are resistant to goals, they really are meeting goals and making goals. They just think they have to be something like, I'm going to become a missionary in a foreign country or I'm going to be published by the end of the year or something. You know, goals, again, are are things that keep you healthy and balanced in your life Mm -hmm. so that you can accomplish bigger things should God call you to them. And so you're already probably, most people are probably already meeting goals they don't even know it wow that's really helpful lisa um okay the next question that i have for you is i know there's an acronym that people use a lot when talking about goals which is smart s-m-a-r-t smart goals and i know that you have a lisa allen version of what smart goals are also can you explain that I do. Sure. Smart goals. And I love smart goals. So this is not, um, this is just an extension of smart goals. Smart goals traditionally are specific. It's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic. You know, the kid that wanted to have a wife and kids, very realistic and um, time bound that there's a, like by the end of the year or by the first quarter or something. And so those are great, but I have smarter goals that help me and um, and the people I work with. Same acronym, but the S is um, selective. You have to be selective because what happens is if we choose too many areas, remember those seven areas of life, if I want to lose 10 pounds and go to the gym five days a week and start memorizing scripture every day, and can you see how they'll, they'll feel too massive? And so I have to select one or two areas and aim my goals there. And of course, have God bless them um, or change them as the case may be. Um, The M is instead of going macro, go micro. And so if you want, say you want to save a thousand dollars this year. Well, instead of start starting with a thousand, start with a hundred or start with 10. And so instead of going macro, make it micro. The A is it needs to be aimed at your why. Why do you want to save a thousand dollars? Are you saving for a trip? Um, I'm working with somebody that's trying to work out more and her why is not to get into a bikini. Her why is to be able to keep up with her kids running around playing tag in her backyard. And so that's her why aimed at her why. The R is really important. Um, Somebody out there needs permission for this. I know it. The R is you need to give yourself permission to rewrite your goals because life happens guys. January starts. If you're watching this today, it's January 27th, and you maybe have already been sick, your kids have been sick, life is interrupted, or you thought you're, you were going to be able to do something you weren't. Let God rewrite those goals with you. My father passed away in August, and it would have been ridiculous for me to keep pursuing my goals, to not rewrite them. So I paused them all together, and God rewrote some of them because of that life experience. Mm-hmm. My goals look different now than they did then. So R is rewrite, and the T is tell someone. Um, tell someone this is accountability. Um, when you write your goals and when you speak them, um, statistics show you're more likely to accomplish them. And when you tell someone, um, that's really important. And don't tell like your sister-in-law who has the ministry of discouragement, uh, <laughs> you know, tell somebody that's cheering you on. My friends know my goals and they cheer me on. Like uh, Maddie and Nicole, you do this. How many times do you cheer me on when I'm going to Pilates? You know what time I leave the, to go out the door to Pilates? You're like, yes, go get them, Lisa. Lisa, I, when I tell somebody I'm more likely to meet those goals. Yeah, that's so good. Well, we don't want to leave this conversation here. We've got so much good things that we're talking about and we don't want to just leave you out in the dark now that we've started this conversation. So we want to give you a free resource. It's called a practical guide to stepping out in faith by Lisa Turkers. This is a free resource. Um, it will help us really dig into what God might be asking us this year, even if it's just a simple act of obedience. Yeah, Nicole. So this resource is based on five phases of faith that so many biblical characters went through when they followed after 
followed hard after God. And I think this is so important because what we're saying is there's a biblical framework for us setting goals. And if we can lean into that, I think it'll change the way we do goals in the future. Um, you can get it right now. We're going to put a link in our comments below. Uh, we'll also link it into the morning show Facebook group. So if you want to find it there, you can do that too. Um, Lisa, we're just so grateful that you were able to come and share so much wisdom. I know I got a lot out of today's um, show. So thank you. Thank you guys. It makes me better every time I go through this too. It helps me with my goals. So Lisa, do you have any last thoughts or pieces of wisdom for us? And after sharing that with us, would you mind praying for us all before we go and finish our day and get ready to tackle this year? I sure will. I sure will. I guess my last piece of wisdom is make sure that you bring everything before God, present it to him and say where are and let him tell you where you are and where he's directing you and then go do it boldly like like you believe you can breed a dragon doing it with that <laughs> faith that God gives you. OK, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you have designed us in such a way um, to be active and um, to be self-led and um, as we're connected to the Holy Spirit and under your direction. And so, Lord, I pray for every person um, that's hearing my voice right now. First of all, I pray a blessing upon them and the year that's ahead. And I pray that they would learn um, to listen to your voice alone and that your voice would be the loudest voice in their goal setting process. And I pray that you would speak to them um, those two questions where are you and where do you want them to go, God? And so, Lord, we submit that to you. We lay that before you and we wait in expectation of a very specific answer for each and every unique um, uh, season that people are in that are listening to this. And we give you all honor, praise and glory because we want our goals not to reflect on how good we are. We want our goals to make us look more like you. And all God's girls said, amen. Amen. Well, friend, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. We can't wait to connect with you in the Facebook group afterwards. And we will be back. We are here every other Thursday. So we will be back Thursday, February 10th. And we have a really good show lined up. It's going to be talking about overcoming three lies that are making us feel less than left out and lonely. I feel like that's the perfect thing to go into just Valentine's Day season together. So can't wait to see you February 10th, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Yes, we're so glad that you joined us today. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye, everyone.